Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about this star that you see right here on the screen. This exceptionally rare star that we've only theoretically predicted but have never actually seen. This is the result of a very rare event that we also thought existed but have not really seen just yet. So let's talk a little bit more about this unusual discovery and welcome to What The Math. So first of all, we need to start with the event that our own sun is going to undergo one day when it's going to become this type of an object known as a white dwarf. This is the closest white dwarf to us, known as Sirius B. Now, these uh, objects have what's known as Chandrasekhar limit. There's a video above my head that may explain a little bit more about this, but in short, what this refers to is this. If I were to add mass to this white dwarf, at a mass of about 1.44 masses of the sun, it's going to go supernova and explode. So this kind of is what we expect um, certain white dwarfs to do, especially when they collide. As a matter of fact, these types of explosions are almost always very similar, because they explode at the same kind of a mass and produce very similar energy, and thus produce very similar luminosity. And today we use these stars as a kind of a measurement candle. As a matter of fact, Type 1a supernova are one of the most prominent ways for scientists to measure distances in the universe. But for the most part, this event occurs when uh, something gives the mass to the white dwarf. Like, for example, a lot of mass from its partner star, or sometimes when this particular white dwarf collides with another white dwarf. So kind of like this. If we have two white dwarfs orbiting around one another, because of the gravitational waves that they create, they will eventually come closer and closer together. Now, this type of an event is most likely something that is going to be observed one day by the scientists, but we still haven't really seen it. As a matter of fact, we've seen pretty much every other major collision. We've obviously seen the neutral star collision that you see right here, we've seen the black hole collision, we've also seen the neutral star and black hole collision very recently. And for the most part, all these events produce a very large, very powerful supernova, as you can see on the screen. But this right here is one event we've never seen. We've never actually seen what happens to um, two white dwarfs when they collide. So in this particular simulation, we can try to maybe recreate this by having them come really close to each other and then, well, basically explode. Now, we believe that this is probably the most common resolution to the two white dwarf problem. In other words, two white dwarfs colliding will probably produce a type 1a supernova as well. And this is what we believe is happening out there in the universe, and this is why we're able to actually um, very accurately predict the distances. But there is another explanation, another sort of theory that has been floating around, but has never really been officially proven or seen. We believe that when two white dwarfs collide in certain situations, especially when their mass is um, kind of past the critical level, they might actually, given proper conditions, um, join together, and we're going to try this right here, join together into an object that becomes a kind of an intermediary stage. Now, I don't think it's going to work here because, yeah, I think they're still going to explode, but we're going to try to create this intermediary stage using the space engine and make it look kind of like this. So, what you're looking at is basically a white dwarf with a supercritical mass that's above Chandrasekhar limit, but it's able to maintain its um, structure and also is able to maintain um, its shape and not explode simply because it currently is burning carbon on the inside and uh, that's protecting it from uh, collapsing even more. But the thing is, this object will eventually uh, run out of carbon and will most likely turn into a neutron star. So in other words, um, what we're looking at right now is a kind of a transitionary stage between two white dwarfs that combined becoming a supercritical white dwarf that you're looking at and then will eventually turn into a neutron star followed by a relatively low energy supernova. Actually, the supernova has a name. It's known as type 1c supernova. And to help you visualize what's happening here, so here, once again, we have these two white dwarfs. This is Series B once again. Our sun is actually going to be a little bit smaller than this. Um, this object is uh, approximately 98% the mass of the sun. When our sun becomes the white dwarf, um, it's most likely going to be about 50 to 60% the mass. So uh, these objects used to be much larger stars. 
And when they combine together, sometimes, given the right conditions, they can then turn into an object like Crab Pulsar right here. A very, very dense, extremely powerful object known as a neutral star, also known as a pulsar, also known as a magnetar. And so we believe that what we've just observed in a star known as J005311 at a distance of about 3200 light years from us is basically this transitionary stage. So, okay. What we're looking at here is, first of all, a nebula, but this is essentially a dust cloud that's hiding the star itself. So the star itself is invisible in uh, visual light, but it is visible to us in infrared light. And according to the study that you can find in the description below, it's approximately 40,000 times more bright than our own sun in infrared light. It's also about 200,000 degrees Kelvin in temperature, which is ridiculously high. It's something like 40 times higher than our own sun and at the same time produces winds, um, stellar winds, that are 8 to 10 times stronger than the stellar winds coming from our sun. So in other words, it's kind of exactly what we predicted a transitionary stage between two white dwarfs and a neutron star would produce. So what we're looking at right now is an object that's going to last somewhere around maybe 10,000 years in total, but we believe that it's actually already at the end of its lifetime, so um, it's most likely going to go supernova in the next thousand years or so, but that supernova is not going to be very bright. It's going to be a type 1c supernova, which would be an event that's a lot more dim than a typical supernova. We might even not really see that well, and at the same time will um, be very different from other supernova because it's not going to have any hydrogen or, or helium in it. Now, okay, so this is the important part. How do we know that it was actually a result of two white dwarfs colliding? Because, you know, it could have been other stars. Well, the reason they know it's two white dwarfs and not any other kinds of stars is because in that particular region, the actual nebula that we're looking at and also all of the emissions suggest that there is no hydrogen or helium left. In other words, these are two stars that um, were just the actual cores, the, uh, the carbon cores of the previously larger stars like our sun. So for this reason, we believe that what we've just observed is a result of a very interesting event. So the two white dwarfs that obviously don't have any nuclear reaction on the inside anymore, they're just the leftover cores of previous stars like our sun, but they do have a lot of carbon on the inside, collided, creating an intermediate stage that now actually has nuclear reaction on the inside where carbon starts burning again. In other words, the uh, collision was so specific and so um, unique that it restarted the um, carbon burning reaction and created the nebula that we're observing and of course the effects of the nebula emitting so much infrared light. So all of this indicates that um, we're looking at the precursor to these unusual neutron stars that form afterwards and the type 1c supernova that are often known as core collapse supernova because what's going to happen to this object afterwards is once it runs out of carbon to burn, it's going to collapse. And once it collapses, it's going to produce a supernova. And this will result in a neutron star. And so if we were to look into the future, possibly anywhere from a few years to maybe a few thousand years, although we think that it's almost there actually, this is what we would see. A supernova that's not going to be very bright with a very dense and very, very small object in the middle, that's essentially a neutron star. And um, at a distance of about 3,000 light years away from us, it's going to be one of the closest uh, pulsars, one of the closest neutron stars to us. Although um, it could take as long as a thousand years, so I don't think we're going to be waiting around for this to happen. But it's quite possible, and this is actually what most scientists believe today, that this is just a super rare event. And we might not even be able to see another one for a really long time. For two white dwarfs to collide in a very specific way to actually restart a nuclear reaction, that's basically luck. That's very, very difficult to achieve. Anyway, on that note, once we discover more, we'll talk about this in one of the future videos. So do subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.